Hi people, welcome to The Run Test, it's Kieran here, and in this video we're getting close up with the Hoka Mac X. This is Hoka's new p plated shoe that's built for daily speed. Hoka says this punchier plated sibling for the Mac 5 combines the comfort and support of the Mac 5 with the propulsion of a plated shoe. So is it any good? Hit play to find out. Some quick details then. Well, the Hoka Mac X come with a five mil drop, the same as the Mac 5. The stack heights are considerably higher though, 10 mils in fact. And the Mac 5, you get 37 mils in the heel and 32 mils in the forefoot for the women's. And then there's 39 millimeters in the heel and 34 mils in the forefoot in the men's. Weight wise, they weigh 9.1 ounces or 258 grams in our UK men's size eight and a half test shoe. When it comes to price, you'll pay 160 pounds in the UK, $180 in the US. So it's 30 pounds or 40 bucks more expensive than the Mac 5. So let's have a quick look at the shoe then. What's new here? and the Hoka Mac X. Well, in the uppers, you have got a Creole Jacquard upper. It's quite a pleasant kind of soft lining on the inside, actually. There's a little more structure on the outside layer. Those are both pretty light and breathable. There's also a half gusseted flat lay tongue with a nice little padding detail on the top to prevent lace pinch. The heel collars have, I'd say, like a medium padding, and there is a heel counter in here for hold and support. And then you get kind of pretty much kind of standard lacing down across the top. Midsole then the Mac X feature a ProFly X midsole that sandwiches a P-Bax plate between a layer of PEBA and a layer of EVA. According to Hoka, that PEBA foam layer is apparently 34% more resilient than the foam you'll find in something like the Hoka Carbon X3. There's also an early stage meta rocker that's there to add smoothness to your transitions. Flip them over to the outsole then, and what you've got here is a pretty extensive covering of durabrasion rubber, taking care of all the main impact zones for that extra durability and to provide the all important traction. So the fit was all good for me in the Mac X in my normal running shoe size. The standard Hoka sizing for me, which is a UK 9, be equating to a US 9.5. Uh, I've had plenty of room in the toe box and around the heel. Like I have a narrow foot, so I tend to be okay with Hoka shoes in general, but I don't think the Mac X is as narrow as some. Maybe not as narrow as the Mac 5, for example. But yeah, it's fit me really well. I've had a good hold around the heel in particular, no problems with any kind of slip there. So happy in my normal running shoe size in the Mac X. Fit for me in the Hoka Mac X is fine in my size i'm an eight this is an eight there's a little bit of room in the front um it doesn't feel too narrow for me like some hocker shoes can be uh, i found it very comfortable i would definitely stay to an eight uh, my size in this shoe so fit for me then i ran in a uk eight and a half and i'd recommend going true to size though like a lot of hokers i think if you've got particularly wide feet they might just come up a little bit narrow around the big toe knuckle area so just be cautious on that but overall i'd recommend going true to size So I've done about 45k in the Hoka Mac X ahead of the embargo across four runs that have fitted very neatly into the daily training category. I've just done two. I've done two just completely easy runs, nice relaxed runs, and a couple of progression runs. One, a fairly relaxed, short one, moving from easy to steady paces. And then today I went out and did a harder heart rate based progression with 15 minutes in high threshold heart rate zones uh, at the end of the run there to test out its chops as a speedy daily trainer. It is a versatile shoe for sure uh, and it does a great job especially at the easy end of things. I've really enjoyed just plodding around in this shoe. I think it's really comfortable, quite supportive for a shoe with a lot of tech going on in the midsole. It feels quite balanced and stable and protects the body well on easy runs. The feel of the shoe actually hasn't changed as much as you might expect or I expected from the uh, Hoka Mac 5. You know, you've got all this fancy tech in the midsole, but it's still very much a rockered, smooth riding shoe rather than one that I think is particularly bouncy or propulsive. You get a bit more punch off the toes from the plate than you get with the Mac X, but the shoe is not very soft and squishy underfoot. Like I say, it rolls through nicely and that's the key feature of it compared to being as bouncy as some of the uh, other plated trainers that do, that do use Peeba foams. So I do think it's a nice shoe to tick along in, certainly. I haven't actually found it amazing for faster efforts though, which is probably my big problem with the shoe so far. It's not an explosively bouncy midsole, like I say, you get a bit more pop off the toes than you do with something like the Mac 5 because of the plate, but it's still quite a big shoe all round. It's also reasonably heavy and it doesn't feel that dynamic and uh, exciting at faster paces. It feels quite big, you can get into a rhythm with it, but when you really do try and push the pace hard, it doesn't feel that wieldy. It's quite an unwieldy shoe, a cumbersome shoe, and doesn't really make up for that by having a really impressive midsole. To me, it's smooth and good, but not outstanding. And this is an area of the market absolutely laden with fantastic shoes right now, with a load more coming out. I mean, believe in the run calls them super trainers. That's a term I'm gonna steal, I think, that's a really good term. And there's loads of them right now. We've already, obviously the Endorphin Speed 3 has been around for a long time, and then the Magic Speed 3 is coming out. There's others from other brands, not all of which we can talk about right now, but will soon. And I think 
a few of the ones I've tested so far just had a bit more pop and feel better at faster paces. The Mac X can certainly hold its own at the easy end of things. And as a, as a daily trainer, I think it's as good as any of them. But if you're picking up a trainer like this, you want it to be really good at the fast paces. And I think this is just OK. The advantage of having the play and the new higher stack mid sole setup compared to the Mac 5 is I think this is going to be a com more comfortable and impressive shoe over longer distances, really at any pace. But at the same time, it's not a complete upgrade from the Mac 5 in that you lose some of the natural uh, grounded feel of the Mac 5, which feels very light and nimble on the foot. And part of that is also actually the fact that the Mac 5 doesn't have an outsole. Here comes Taz, uh, <laughs> my cat, uh, which is uh, actually creates quite a nice con contact feel with the ground as a result, because it feels very soft on the ground without that outsole. Now, obviously having an outsole will help grip, but actually first run in the Mac 5 was on greasy pavements and it didn't grip very well um, at all. But I think it will rough up a bit. The outsole will get better and it certainly will help with durability, which is obviously important as it's a more expensive shoe than the Mac 5 but yeah all around probably the moral experience was fine but maybe left me wanting a little bit um, especially given the quality of the shoes the Mac 5 is going to go up against. Now for the run test for me I've done around 30 miles in this shoe my usual mix of paces and terrains a bit of tarmac some light river path off-roading I fell in love with this shoe straight out of the box is pretty much my summary. This is really my kind of running shoe. Hoka describes it as an adaptable trader that's comfortable enough for endurance efforts, but it also says that it responds equally well to pace increases. And I actually think they've really nailed that. It feels instantly great on the foot. It's comfortable. It's got a dialed in, really unfussy fit. Just feels super comfortable the minute you pick it up and lace it up. Now I ran in this one without looking at the specs or even what it was designed to do. And I have to say, I instantly felt like it could do pretty much anything at a mixture of paces. I also weighed it after I'd run it. I was really surprised to realize that it's actually heavier than the Mac 5. It actually feels more nimble to me on the foot. That extra stack has clearly added some weight, but somehow it still feels more compact than the Mac 5 to me anyway. Overall, I think it's a really nice balanced shoe. There's a snappiness to it, an easy roll through off that rocker. You get a cushion springy ride that's not too firm, it's not too soft, again, just really well balanced. I think the foam plate combo returns just at the right time. So you get enough ground feel, which is something that I like, but you get a bit of a kick when you need it as well. And for me, this lands really firmly in the pile of shoes marked, you can handle anything, and one that uh, yeah, I would veer towards picking up quite often, I think. If you watch the channel, you'll know we talk about the Hocker Mac 5 quite a lot. So the release of the Mac X is very, very exciting. Uh, Hocker has added an X to some of its shoes over the past couple of years to add a plate into them. Things like the Bondi, the Bondi got a, a Bondi X. Wasn't a big fan of that shoe, didn't really seem like it needed a plate in it. The Mac 5 is a really fast shoe, it's a very versatile shoe. I love training in that shoe for Chicago Marathon. I did a lot of my faster efforts for um, as part of my training plan, intervals, things like that. And during that period, there was a lot of talk about saying, well, if they just put a plate in the Hocker Mac 5, could be an incredible shoe and this is it this is the shoe that um has that has that plate in um and it has a lot of similarities to the mac 5 so it is very very versatile it's a very nippy shoe but also it feels pretty good um at consistent daily pace as well so uh, i've done a few runs in this uh the shoe some of them my more consistent daily pace it's around four minute 50 kilometers per kilometer feels great for that. I could definitely felt very comfortable, felt like it was rolling me forward quite nicely with a nice little bit of pop from, from the plate. I don't think the plates are very noticeable plate. It's not like something you'll get in the Alpha Fly or the Vapor Fly. It's more like it's helping with a bit of efficiency um, and it really does that quite well. It felt very, very easy to run at an easy, comfortable pace in this shoe. Uh, when doing an interval in this shoe, it felt very nice. So um, it really pick up the pace nicely in it. Suddenly you starts to come into its own and it just feels great. You can really do some fast stuff in this. And, and for me, that would be about four minute uh, kilometers for my intervals. And it feels great at those paces. It's not the lightest shoe in the world, but it, it, it feels light on the feet and it feels like you can really pick up the pace nicely um, with a little bit of rebound. There's a nice jaw layer foam in it with uh, a bit of combination between that EVA and the, the, the P-backs in it and it just delivers. It just feels really good. Um, the upper on it is very comfortable. No issues at all with that. It's just enough padding on it to, to really feel great for those longer daily runs um, without being too heavily padded. So it, it just nice balance uh, when it comes to, to comfort uh, over, that uh, over that versatility of runs. The outsole is pretty good. There's not a lot of um, outsole rubber on it, uh, but just enough to sort of just cover it off. But um, 
the midsole foam in here feels pretty sturdy uh, and I've had very minimal signs of wear and tear on these shoes so far. So I think the outsole is probably going to do a pretty good job. Um, other than that, yeah, just a solid all round versatile trainer, which I think is going to be the one of the big ones that people pick up this year. So for my verdict then, well, I think I've given the game away here. I love the Mac 5 for its comfort and versatility. And I think the Mac X does that lineage some real justice, but it also offers something new. It's light, it's fast, it's agile, it's punchy, but it's still just about protective enough. For me, this is one of the best shoes that I've run in so far this year. Yes, it's more expensive. And I think if budget comes into it, you know, we said in the Mac 5, Mac X comparison, the, the Mac 5 would still marginally offer better versatility and value, but it's a really close call. And if you're looking for a fun, lively shoe that's a bit more capable at those kind of faster paces, and you're not bothered by the extra 30 pounds, now I don't think you would regret investing in the Mac X. If you've already got the Mac 5, I wouldn't bother upgrading. Uh, I think also the final thing to say is that, yeah, Hoka has absolutely nailed it on the colorway too. So my verdict on the Hoka Mac X is that it's a shoe that people have been waiting for for a while, and it delivers. It's a really good daily shoe that's very, very versatile. It's very similar to things like the Saucony Endorphin Speedline. Also feels great when you're trying to pick up the pace as well. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be a great shoe uh, as a training partner for the fantastic Hocker Rocket X3. Sort of sits perfectly alongside that for very similar to something like the Saucony Endorphin Pro uh, 3 and the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. Now Hocker has got a fantastic two two shoe lineup for those training for marathons half marathons anything like that uh, it just works really well alongside this and to be honest i'd probably happily pick this up for most of my training sessions uh, whether that's track whether it's interval whether it's easy daily daily runs so it might be a good choice as well for people that just want one shoe similar thing to the Saucony dorfin speed 3 where a lot of people picked up that shoe for the, as their one shoe that they did all their running in the mac x can now do that nicely Although the Mac 5 could do that as well. It's just a little bit more responsive now um, and just has a bit more to it. I definitely think um, they're almost comparable shoes, the Hocker Mac 5 and this shoe. I still think the Hocker Mac 5 is one of the best shoes around. And if you're definitely not sure if you want a plate in a shoe, go for the Mac 5 because it's there's not much in it. Um, and yeah, it's a shoe that I'd still pick up for a lot of, of training runs. But... I think there's just a tiny bit more pop in this shoe and it does run a little bit differently. It feels a little bit different when, you, when, you're, running, when you're running in it. It's a bit of a rolling action to this, which I didn't get from the Hocker Mac 5. Um, but I think it's a fantastic shoe uh, and um, it's well worth looking at if you want a faster training shoe or just an all-round versatile daily trainer. So I thought the Mac X was going to be a slam dunk, to be honest. When I saw it on paper, it sounded amazing. I love the Mac 5. You've raised your stack a bit, used a better foam, added a Piva plate to add a bit of stiffness and punch without being too harsh like a carbon plate. Higher stack, a bit more protection. And all around, uh, I think it is a good shoe, but actually it isn't as great as I was hoping for. And I'm not sure it's one I'll be going to pick up given the quality uh, of the competition in the plated trainer market right now. It's a bigger shoe uh, and that is noticeable compared to the Mac 5. And it does a great job of protecting the legs. I think it's a really nice daily train to roll around in, but I think it lacks a bit when it comes to the faster paces. It's a bit bigger and heavier than some of the other options in this area. It's actually also bigger and heavier than the Mac 5. So you lose a bit of that pickup speed, even if you do get a bit more propulsion from this shoe compared to the Mac 5 thanks to the plate and the Piva foam. Overall, I think the stuff it does best is actually similar to the Mac 5 in that it is a nice shoe to cruise around in. And actually, I expected a bit more from a shoe of all this tech of the midsole. I thought it'd be good at cruising around in, but also have a bit more punch when it comes to faster runs. So if you are looking for an all-rounder that does have those kind of speedy chops, I'd be looking still at the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, been around for a long time. The Asics Magic Speed line, about to start testing the 3. The 2 is very good. I think I still prefer the 2 to the Mac X, and the 3 looks to have some nice upgrades as well. I find the Adidas Boston 12 a bit uh, firmer and more exciting at fast paces. It feels like more natural at fast paces compared to the Mac X, which feels like you have to get going in a little bit because it is that little bit larger in general and more of a rocket shoe than a really snappy fast one. So yeah, it's not going straight to the top of my list in this category for sure. I think it's a really nice shoe. Be happy cruising around it, doing a nice variety of runs in it, but it didn't quite wow me in the way I really thought it was going to and really hoped it was going to when I saw all the specs and tech on paper. So yeah, it's a good shoe, but I think Hoka has a little bit more to do to really stand up against the competition in this very competitive super trainer category. So there you go then, that is our review of the new Hoka Mac X. We hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, of course, hit us up in the comments below. If you like what we're doing here on the Run Testers, 
Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, definitely ring that bell because that will alert you when new videos drop. You'll be able to hear about those when they land. There will be more head-to-heads coming up featuring the Hokamak X up against other plated shoes. They'll be coming soon. In the meantime, if you want to see our F Mac X versus Mac 5 head-to-head, that hopefully will be on the channel appearing just about now. Otherwise, thanks for watching and good luck with your running out there. We hope to see you again soon on the Run Testers.